I'm here to uh, introduce Susan B. Martinez. Uh, sh she's PhD. PhD. Or Dr. Susan. Uh, she is has written her new book, uh, Delusions in Science and Spirituality, and she's here to talk about it. And um, uh, she's concentrating on Chapter 4, as I understand. So uh, my first question, Susan, is what um, research is actually... Uh, getting uh, more uh, backing than cancer research? The answer is global warming research. Um, and that's almost a shocking statistic in my book, particularly if you understand what I'm going to be getting at today, that the whole thing is a hoax the whole warming. Uh, uh, they won't call it a theory, they'll call it a fact, uh, is not true. Not scientifically true. It's become only politically true. Uh, this is a very serious matter. More money going into it than cancer research. Uh, I'm not sure we mentioned this clearly, but chapter four of my new book Delusions is uh, about the global warming hoax. Uh, it's an attempt to prove, among other things, that the globe is cooling in, in the long term, not warming. Um, I just thought we, this was so cute. Uh, global warming has been blamed. Global warming, which does not exist, uh, outside of our minds uh, has been blamed for everything from droughts to wildfires, floods, extreme rainfalls, La Nina, tornadoes, infections, infectious disease, retreat of wildlife, extinction of species, high school dropout rate, okay, ethnic cleansing in Darfur, and the 2007 bridge collapse in Minnesota, not to mention the heart-wrenching reports of ski resorts in peril. Um, where do we begin? Uh, it's kind of my plan to begin with the new science, which is uh, the uh, paradigm, the scientific model that I've been studying and learning for 20 years and incorporating in my writing. Uh, it's also a new cosmogony. Uh, much of it is based on the book of cosmogony and prophecy uh, in the middle of the Oaspe Bible. Can you please explain the four motions of the earth as per the new science and, and how it relates to uh, climate? Um, yes, and that's exactly uh, where I left off, that uh, there's no sensible way of talking about this without my uh, uh, explaining in some most elementary way uh, what a different kind of uh, cosmogony system I'm working from and others who are working as well from the, uh, uh, from the new science perspective. We, Sometimes call it for vortex uh, science, and it truly is that, but it, it's, it's not directly on topic today. On topic today uh, is the question of whether our planet, bottom line, whether our planet is uh, warming up or cooling down. Uh, okay, it's easy enough to get rid of the first two motions of the Earth, and that, what, what I'm talking about right now is the four motions of the Earth. The first two motions of the earth uh, every school child uh, is, uh, knows about, and that is the rotation of the earth on a daily basis, and uh, secondly, uh, the revolution of the earth around the sun. But there are two more, and these are revealed in the New Science, the Book of Cosmogony and Prophecy. Uh, the th uh, third. Uh, there's a little controversy here too, but let me just say it the way I think it is. The third motion is oscillaic, which is the the uh, Earth itself over a very large span of time, turning from north to south. Okay, and the fourth and last motion 
uh, of the earth is through through the cosmos the roadway of the stars and that has a name it's called Savorkin the work really uh, pertains to the word for work you know how the universe works uh, okay so now uh, once you become familiar with the science you can understand how uh, oscillatic motion the third motion of the earth might pertain to the questions of climate change uh, and, and that's really the primary uh, area we want to look at. Uh, but you can also add that the fourth motion of the Earth also brings uh, climate changes. In, uh, in other words, whether whether the uh, uh, sun and its family travel is traveling through cold or, or hot space. Um, I'm just thinking of a final point to make on oscillation, the fourth uh, motion of the Earth, because that will uh, kind of uh, complete the idea how this affects climate and weather. Um, so let's say uh, Norway has had an increase uh, over the 20th century of uh, one uh, centigrade or one point, point Fahrenheit, whatever. Um, and so there seems to be a warming trend uh, in that region. Well, what if the Earth is gradually moving like this and Norway's getting closer to the equator that's what I was trying to point out before and likewise all the uh, other differences around the earth um, it's an established fact that the earth has moved uh, north to south in, in a regular pattern uh, based on things like uh, magnolia trees and fossils of magnolia trees and haven't even certain Inuits described the the sun as setting uh, later in the day or in a different position? Yes, Dan. I, I remember you mentioning that because it's exactly relevant to uh, what we're saying. And it, it opens out the point that uh, uh, Dr. Spencer is trying to make in the first place, which is that we are not looking at long-term uh, trends, whether warming or cooling, these are short-term trends. And the book uh, introduces the interested student to the PDO, which stands nice uh, tongue twister, but Pacific Decadal Oscillation, PDO. But uh, bottom line, it refers to a basically 30-year uh, cycle <coughs> uh, affecting uh, circulation and uh, air currents on Earth. He's got all kinds of charts in the book. It's really, everybody has to read this book if they're uh, investing anything into the concept of global warming. Uh, so, PDO, uh, there's a, a short-term cycle. It's maybe a 30-year cycle, maybe 33, and the uh, warmth and cold uh, alternates in that time span according to uh, 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 the circulation patterns on, on Earth. Now, why am I talking uh, about that? What was your original question, Dan? Well, my original question actually pertained to the, um, the po pole movement of the poles. Oh, okay. So, um, that's what uh, oscillation means and um, um, so, uh, so there is no doubt about the uh, fourth motion of the Earth. I think we can move on. And I was uh, going to um, <laughs> just some things in my scrapbook. You know what we have been the media barrage, the global warming barrage we have been exposed to in the last 20 years. This basically got started in the early 1990s. What am I saying? It's really close to 30 years now. Um, it has been called by the greatest minds of our time the greatest climatological hype of all time, the greatest scientific uh, uh, hoax of, uh, of all time. Uh, really, I kid you not, I, I could pull out those quotes for you if I could. Uh, uh, there's too much being put into this, even to think of it being ta taken from cancer research and related studies to uh, take it mildly. Now, I was thinking about people who 
uh, think one way and people who think the opposite way and the people in between sitting on the fence who don't think either way. All of that has to change, you know. Uh, we need the truth now. Time is running out. Uh, it's time for us to uh, bring together a, a unified science. Our, our biggest scientific hero, that was his goal, Dr. Einstein. Uh, we were trying to complete a picture of uh, oscillatic motion. Um, and this anticipates the next uh, question, which I think you're going to ask about pole shift. Um, okay, just if you can, d d does this show well enough to? Okay, so you can get the idea that what I was talking about, where the um, north and south pole changed places over several hundred thousands of years. Um, and so that's a slow kind of um, oscillation of the Earth. I tried to use a big fat beach ball analogy just to get a picture of it. Um, okay, so uh, it, it, that means, you know, uh, very simply that uh, as it's moving, as the, as the Earth is uh, oscillating, some parts, some countries are moving away from the equator and some are moving toward it. Just as some are moving away from the polar regions and some are moving toward it, that would be a natural uh, consequence of the Earth's oscillation. Anyway, um, the, to try to make some sense of this, this is a well-known concept in Earth science, uh, pole shift, magnetic reversal. That's what it is. North and south change place, and by the way, east and west also. Uh, but uh, a, a, a very um, sizable uh, literature of mm, false uh, starts has come about in connection with uh, pole shift. I mean, the name itself uh, evokes uh, images of a disaster, um, ca catas catas catastrophic earth changes, instant pole shift. Uh, the, the really, like I say, is a pretty big literature on this, and um, it's all completely speculative. Uh, and I, I notice uh, uh, this is uh, running through uh, the uh, science books and journals constantly. Uh, that some kind of boloid or asteroid or uh, chunks from space uh, came along and. Uh, Cause the pole to the poles to flip, you know, just knocked it so but knocked the earth so bad the poles flipped, and and then they say they use the same ca catastrophic uh, uh, scenarios to uh, explain the uh, emptiness of the Pacific Ocean and almost any other scientific fact that has not been adequately explained to date. Okay, that's called catastrophism, and that's a separate story, but. Uh, see, this is very natural. For the, uh, This would be exactly the opposite, very natural, because, okay, here's one uh, justification. Uh, if the ice uh, 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 accumulates too uh, heavily uh, on the poles, it'll begin to ruin the uh, globular configuration of the planet. So it, it would be Mother Nature uh, smart enough to uh, oscillate the Earth so each region takes turns. Uh, uh, with uh, being at the poles, and uh, in fact, when you start to look at the science of this, you've got the basins of the world which were formed when the planet was at the poles, the Sudan Basin, the Hudson Bay, and so on. The weight, the sheer weight of the ice. I'm going to... Um, go ahead and introduce you to um, Dr. Roy W. Spencer. Um, 
marvelous uh, atmospheric uh, scientist in uh, the next state over from here, Alabama. Uh, um, atmospheric scientist. And as you can see, uh, his book is called The Great uh, Global Warming Blunder, and it came out a few years ago. And it, um, it oh, it's got a, uh, a blurb from John Coleman, who is meteorologist and founder of the Weather Channel. I'm so glad I my eye fell on that because I want to. Here's something I was saving to tell you about. Uh, in October, uh, well, that was uh, uh, that was not this year, but just recently, actually, um, 109. Yeah, it was probably. Um, anyway, uh, Britain's Daily Mail newspaper reported that noted meteorologist John Coleman, founder of the Weather Channel, in an open letter letter to the United Nations, wrote. There is no climate crisis. Man-made global warming is a lie and not backed up by science. My next question is, can you explain how dinosaur extinction relates to all of this? Yes. Um, I like studying the dinosaurs and uh, talking about it and writing about it uh, because I think we've got a lot to a clear up uh, uh, concerning that as well. Uh, I don't buy into the timeline on it, the 65 million year thing. I don't think it was that long ago, but it was it was long ago. Uh, in any case, uh, it's a very simple uh, model, and uh, you know these it it uh, answers all the standards of uh, scientific truth. How you judge uh, a um, a hypothesis uh, for its merit. Uh, the Rotexian model, the new science, the aging of the Earth, and the oscillation of the Earth, these uh, are, are the things that bring together a unified theory, the theory of everything. I guess you might have heard of that. And um, we've got, I, I want to uh, quote, quote the uh, scientists of the past who uh, agree with me on this. Um, Comte de Buffon, these are mostly 19th century scientists, Richard Owen, T.H. Huxley, 20th century Isaac Asimov, and others agree on this much. Cooling was the cause of the dinosaur extinction. Um, that's all I wanted to uh, point out, that uh, it, you see, there was a, um, there was a strong a tendency in the 19th century, m most of the scientists who I've just quoted being 19th century, uh, uh, for science, men of science to think in a practical way, in a reasonable way, to use a, a, a logic in its strongest way. Uh, and so it was uh, 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 also strongly believed in the 19th century, the 20th century, not this out, but in the 19th century it was believed that the earth had begun its life as a fiery, molten ball of fire. The 20th century knocked that down and it hasn't come back up, uh, despite uh, my efforts and the efforts of my fellow uh, new scientists. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, one, one of the hardest things to do in life is to convince a person of the obvious. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and I find myself in this position, and uh, uh, others are on my uh, side of this thing uh, the same. This is obvious. Uh, we will start with the most obvious fact of all and uh, beg for this to be re resuscitated into 21st century science, which is the following. Uh, is nature of nature for planets to begin as uh, balls of fire. Uh, at about 600 degrees, uh, they can solidify from a gaseous uh, uh, maelstrom. Uh, and then they continue to cool down uh, to temperatures that become amenable to animal 
animal and vegetable life. Um, and so it is a simple, the simplest of principles that we have laid down here. Uh, a planet, it, it, a planetary life begins in uh, extreme heat and ends in extreme cold. Uh, there's another factor I uh, hasten to add, uh, extreme wetness in the beginning of a world, at least our world. <coughs> Uh, extreme wetness in, in the earliest times and uh, dry as dust, like Mars, at, at the end of planetary life. I want to point out that um, if, the, if, the mother, if the mother dinosaur, uh, who you know is heavy, uh, has to sit on her eggs, her chicky eggs, uh, in order to keep them warm in, in a, a cooling climate, um, that's not going to work out. She's too heavy uh, uh, to do that. I want to point out also that at the time of the dinosaur extinction, ice was just beginning to form at the poles. Uh, until that time, the planet was totally warm, north, south, east, and west. We already know who, what famous 19th century scientists uh, uh, agree with me about this. Uh, uh, I should add that it would only take two or three degrees of blood heat to bring about the extinction of the uh, dinosaurs and probably um, most other species too. They're all temperature uh, dependent. You see, when the age of the dinosaurs ended, uh, that be began the age of mammals, uh, 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 warm-blooded uh, creatures with fur, uh, fur, fur covering, your cats, your dogs, your pigs, uh, just at the end of the uh, dinosaur age. All of this, everything, uh, botany, you don't even need uh, ge geology, botany uh, itself, and the history of it, uh, teaches the uh, cooling of the earth. And this, of course, is a very long term process that pertains to the actual age of the earth itself. And so you're talking about millions of years. There's nothing to be afraid of in climate change except for slight cooling and slight drying. But uh, I gotta take back what I just said a little bit because the process does get uh, more rapid as the earth uh, ages and we already have signs of serious drought in many parts of the planet. Um, I wanted to um, finish up on Dr. Roy. Uh, actually, you know, I'm in Georgia and, and uh, Dr. Roy is in Alabama and so is uh, Dr. John Christie who was, um, I think he was uh, uh, Dr. Roy's immediate uh, superior in the uh, Department of Atmospheric Science over there in Alabama. Uh, John Christie later became the state climatologist of Alabama, uh, which he is now, Dr. John Christie. And John and Roy um, are doing the same thing I'm doing in the sense of trying to uh, tell the public that global warming is not true. Uh, I, I talked to uh, John on the phone once and uh, he was a very forthright. He has given uh, hearings in front of Congress. You know, it's one of the country's uh, most uh, uh, accomplished uh, atmospheric scientists. And he says, no matter what the truth is, it don't matter there uh, in Congress and in the White House. They've got their global warming agenda, and that's that. It's a very sorry uh, uh, situation. Um, Roy Spencer has a great gift of uh, making uh, science understandable in his book. He's probably a good teacher. Um, he, I'm, I want to quote him. He says, one can get just about anything one wants with computer models. Okay? The output of computers is no better than the information that the programmer puts in. Unquote. I mean, we're naive if we don't already uh, realize this. 
It is also Spencer's contention, and I'm quoting again, you don't need fancy climate models or supercomputers to do some very good experiments, say in a spreadsheet program on your own computer. In contrast to the IPCC, uh, Intergovernmental pa Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, uh, in contrast to the IPCC's magical mystery mega models running on supercomputers, I have used a, a simple climate model to demonstrate these concepts. Um, so um, I'm, the, uh, I'm the last one to be able to talk about computers because I'm a, a computer dinosaur, but I wanted you to hear what Dr. Roy had to uh, s say about it. He, he frankly states that, quote, the IPC was formed for largely political reasons, not scientific, and it has systematically ignored the 800-pound gorilla in the room, natural, internally generated climate variability. That's the argument in a nutshell. Uh, acting instead for, th for the protection and dissemination of the IPCC party line. So, you know, it's politics. It, it's back to politics. It's not science. It's barely science. In fact, it's, it's anti-science because this is where all the research money is going into this area and if you happen to disagree, you're out on the street. So, let me go on. Um, why is the study of Mars a, um, a, the best way to understand um, climate change? Very good. Uh, very good. Um, perfect uh, timing because I just got this out. I have written about this. Um, it has been published. Th this was an article of mine called Global Cooling in Atlantis Rising number 71. And uh, a lot of the ar argument in here does draw on uh, data from Mars. Um, Mars is cold, uh, minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Mars is dry, the dry channels, the, the canals, the famous canals of Mars. Uh, cold and dry, Mars uh, has um, very little gravity. Uh, you take off a lot of weight if, if you got a weight on Mars. Uh, it's quite a lot now, but it is our, our brother planet. Uh, it uh, it rotates in 24 and a half hours uh, as the Earth uh, compared to the Earth rotates in 24 hours. So it's recent. It's our most perfect uh, uh, laboratory for a study of planetary extinction uh, because it's it's already uh, uh, well on its way to being a dead planet. Okay, when when people ask if global warming ended in 1997. What is that referring to? Oh, okay. Um, uh, actually, there uh, I read, uh, read quite a few articles that did pinpoint that year, 1997, because um, uh, the, the global warming um, uh, theory began in the strong in the 1990s, but then by the end of the 1990s, specifically in 97, um, they started noticing slight statistical uh, changes. And from, in, as a matter of fact, from 1997 to the current year, 2015, um, there's been a very slight cooling trend as opposed to a, uh, the warming trend that was perceived uh, in the 90s. This relates back to the PTO uh, we were grappling with before a 30-year cycle where you can expect a cool period for 30, 33 years and then alternate again with a warmish period. They're all uh, short-term trends and uh, really of uh, not much significance or at least not pertaining at all to a claim of uh, global warming. Um, where, where were we, Jane? Um, well, that 
brings me to my next question. What does anthrop anthropogenic mean? Okay, you pronounced it perfectly. Um, and anthropo refers to man and genic refers to uh, ca causation. So it's, it really means man caused climate change. It's the um, jaw-breaking uh, adjective that has been used in the literature all along uh, to um, indicate that uh, mankind is raising the temperature of this planet by putting out fossil, you know, by burning uh, fossil fuels and by, uh, you know, uh, spraying aerosol cans and uh, by putting uh, 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 more greenhouse gases into the um, atmosphere. Uh, anthropogenic uh, simply means that man is causing climate change rather than nature. And that in itself is so laughable that it's hard to address. Um, uh, no, uh, the planet itself determines, uh, the planetary life determines uh, the temperature uh, on that sphere and the people, you know, um, can only have a local uh, effect, a meaningless, insignificant effect on the temperature uh, of a world. Is uh, carbon dioxide responsible for climate change? Well, um, see, that's exactly ties in with what I was just talking about because the uh, mankind just blamed, uh, uh, they call it anthropogenic um, uh, climate change because man is doing this and man is doing that. Um, uh, carbon dioxide is a byproduct of uh, f fossil fuel uh, uh, burning and it's in, in the category of uh, greenhouse gases uh, which uh, hold warmth on the planet and that's perfectly natural. There's no problem with that. Uh, but carbon dioxide has been demonized. I have never seen such ridiculous work put out as sound and uh, worthy in any way of, of our attention. It's a very minor uh, trace gas. The most important greenhouse gases are, are water vapor and clouds. Pushes, do you think planetary age is part of the equation? Um, very much so. Um, I have noticed that it's just not in the literature. It's not there. Uh, none of the scientists are talking about um, how uh, these mysterious factors or mechanisms might be uh, an effect of uh, aging. Uh, and I think it is an effect uh, of aging um, so that as a planet ages, uh, it cools. Um, I have just been writing about aging in a different context and it had to do with uh, a climatary, uh, it had to do with uh, climate change, uh, some of the uh, severe kind of storms the, uh, we seem to have been subject to in the last few decades and uh, weird rainfall patterns. Um, this gets us off into a very interesting but uh, off uh, topic. I'm currently writing about it for uh, Atlantis Rising. What part does uh, axial motion, otherwise known as velocity, play in it? Um, we're talking about the uh, first movement of, of the Earth. We did start out uh, talking about the four movements of the Earth, the rotation, revolution, oscillaic, and suborcum. Uh, the very first is the uh, daily uh, uh, rotation uh, of the Earth, and um, the, the uh, specific reference there is axial velocity. Uh, it does translate to how many hours there are in the day. Uh, 24 hours in the day. As I pointed out uh, uh, shortly before, Mars uh, uh, rotates in 24 and a half hours, whereas Earth rotates in 24. So you can see the slowdown process there. And this is what I'm trying to get at. And I'm saying, uh, I'm also saying that this is basic. Um, that 
uh, I believe it is a truism uh, that uh, motion and heat are, are in a. Uh, it, it, uh, I don't want to say inverse relation. I want to say uh, a positive relation to each other. Slow down the motion, and you slow down the uh, heat. A fast motion, friction, as you know, also is heat heat producing. So, uh, very simply stated, uh, that as the Earth slows down its uh, uh, rate of rotation, of uh, uh, daily turning, um, it, it loses uh, heat to that same degree, a very small uh, degree. Uh, this is something again that uh, is in science, proved by science, known to science, uh, that the Earth in a former day, in a former epoch, uh, spun much faster on its axis. And so you have um, scientists saying uh, 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 infant Earth uh, s spun around uh, only five hours in the day and then nine hours, and then the period where it spun for, uh, in the 24-hour day. Uh, so the future and the long-term trend is slowing down, and that means heat loss. Uh, do you have anything to say about the uh, Arctic ice caps melting? Um, uh, that has become one of the big news stories. You know, in the past 20 years, we have just no way of avoiding it, uh, those articles, if you uh, read uh, news media. It's always there. The Larson ice cap broke off. This one broke off. You know, just to get up this uh, atmosphere that's false teaching of this false theory uh, to make it look like scientific facts. Uh, now, uh, we should know by now that, you know, the media can manipulate anything, and the science can ma manipulate anything, and anyone can ma manipulate any anything. Uh, and this is this is what uh, has been. Uh, if we run out of time, I don't want to leave without saying that uh, some parts of Antarctica are uh, melting uh, at a greater rate, and other parts are freezing over faster. There's a, a balancing mechanism. There's no basis uh, for any uh, s sort of concern or fear.